Um, but I didn't lose my passion for work in the theatre. I think I lost sight of thinking that theatre and film were actually vital to to society's well-being as a whole. Um, but then when I went to Sarajevo uh, the very first time and all the subsequent times during the war, I realised that all the arts, um, whether it's paint on canvas or sculpting, um, dancing, singing, modern, classical, acting, are absolutely vital to the resistance of human beings, to uh, both to war, um, to horror, as in the case of Sarajevo, um, because of the continual bombardments and shellings and snipers. And then I got at sort of what I feel, ever felt ever since, was a true perspective that the arts stop society going rotten and mad, basically. An obvious question that, that arises in your life is you've been so politically engaged. And you mentioned the feeling some people have when they get involved in politics that the arts is irrelevant. But for you, it has always been both, acting and politics. There's, there's never been a time when you thought it should just be politics from now on. Oh, I can't give you an answer lasting an hour, which I'd like to. <laughs> but basically, yes, yes to both of your statements or questions. Um, because I was what's called now an internally displaced person along with my brother um, in the Second World War. And we an left evacuee, London. We, we were yeah. evacuee was the word in those days. Now it's IDP. Yeah. And um, went up to the country and uh, stayed with a cousin up, way, way up, but we saw the burning of Coventry. Um, and so we listened to the weather forecast and we listened to the news every night from as long way back as I can remember. And so, and we had a sense of a world because it was World War II. And we knew that our uncles, and at one point our father, but our uncles, one of whom was killed in the Pacific, they were fighting in a world war. So we got a sense of the world, and of course we wanted to put our little bit into the war effort, which is how we were all trained to be, and great and good that we were. And so when I was four years old, and my brother was two, we were already acting in plays that were devised and written by a boy who was six, who was also evacuated and living in the same house. Um, and uh, we roped in audiences of 10 people, 12 people, and we charged them what was then existed, half a penny. And the half a penny had to have a ship on it, because there used to be a half a penny with ships on it. And we sent the money that we earned this way to the merchant seamen, who we knew were running a, the blockade of... Nazi submarines to try and get food into Britain. So when you've got a world look, you don't see things quite as narrowly as party politics. And yet, politics is involved in war as it is in peace and as it is in human rights. So there have been times, certainly, Mark, when I've thought I've got to spend my time um, for UNICEF for a whole year, going to Sarajevo, going to Belgrade, going to Croatia, going around the refugee camps to Macedonia, later to Kosovo, <coughs> during very difficult times. And during those times, I met fellow actors and fellow dancers, fellow singers, and we tried to build a future, and as well as climbing on flatbed trucks to give performances for children in refugee camps and uh, in cellars. But in, in your life, there have been, there, you have been involved in party politics, particularly the uh, Socialist yes, Workers' Party, and then you no, say... it was the Workers' Revolutionary Workers Party. Workers' Revolutionary Party, yeah. 
do you draw a distinction now between that kind of political involvement and the more humanitarian stuff that you do? Well, there is certainly a distinction. Um, in my case, um, the period of time in which I was in that political party, which had been following having been in the Labour Party, <coughs> which I'd done a lot of campaigning for in the 60s. And um, what interested me in this particular party, the Workers' Revolutionary Party, was the enormous amount of study, study of history and philosophy. Um, because I've, although I've never asked enough questions, I've learnt, had to learn to ask questions, um, it's began to feed questions that I'd got teeming in my brain, but I'd never found anybody who could answer them. For the only non-local candidate, Vanessa Redgrave of the Workers' Revolutionary Party, the main aim, as she told bus workers, is to bring about workers' power and freedom from wage controls. We fight for socialist policies and we're leading the fight to bring this government down. At various times in your life, you described yourself as a Marxist. You actually say in your memoirs as a Marxist on a couple of occasions. Would you still use that label? No, I, don't, I wouldn't because, and I should have said then, I don't know if I did or not, that I was learning. Um, perhaps at the time I wrote it, we were still all using labels too readily about oneself as well as about other people. Um, no, I wouldn't call myself a Marxist, but I think Marx made a, made a very great contribution to philosophy. At various times in your career, you, you have suffered for your politics. I mean, you, you've been clear about this in your memoirs, also in your interviews. I don't think I've ever said that, well, ever. Not in, not in my autobiography. Well, they have been... Kindly give it this grand name, my memoirs. memoirs. Your autobiography. I mean, my girly, I'm not Diogola. Let, or... let me put this another <laughs> way. There, there have been consequences in your acting career. There were periods when American producers wouldn't employ you. No, British producers wouldn't employ me, thank God. It American was on Broadway. Producers. No, there was a period on Broadway yeah. when... Was there not? Was there not a period on Broadway when you were persona non grata? On Broadway? Not to my memory. No. It doesn't come to mind. You also clearly suggest in your autobiography, as I'll call it, that, um, that film producers may have paid you less because they thought that the money was going to... Um, political causes. I don't think I said that. If I did, I don't agree with it. You, you say about Agatha, you say you got, um, you got a smaller got sum a than pittance. you expected. Yeah. yeah. You, I promise you, you suggest in your autobiography that that was ah, because... But maybe I changed it later. <laughs> because they thought I hope it, I did. They thought it was going to go to the um, Workers' no, Revolutionary no, Party. No, no, that was an accusation that was made against me. I never believed right. that. I thought, you know, I mean, we actors, we're used to being hired for as little as possible. <laughs> but without, without going, we don't bear anyone yeah, a grudge yeah. for it, and I don't. I think there were consequences. Without going back over it all again, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, as you know, they refused to, uh, some members refused to appear with you. You had a gig there cancelled. There have been... Have well, there actually, uh, you haven't got an accurate account of this, <laughs> and I wouldn't want to talk about the Boston Symphony Orchestra, except insofar as um, I did long to do the narrative in that piece of work by Stravinsky, and I felt very honoured to have been asked to do five concerts. And I was very honoured when they were cancelled that, um, that the theatre director came and found me and said, this is what actually happened. And um, but because, but he came though, to me, you? I'm not going to go in the details. Yeah. I don't yeah. think this is about, about what art is, except to say that um, all my fellow artists in the United States, whether musicians or certainly actors, equity especially, um, we're totally against blacklisting. And I have always found out in my life 
that when a principle is at stake, um, can be for other people, myself or whoever, that people respond. Always, always, always. Um, particularly as I also feel extremely strongly, more strongly now than ever before, that there must be an area in life where politics are absolutely kept out, except insofar as you have to work for working conditions, you may have to oppose the government of the day for closing down theatre companies or whatever, whatever. But uh, as far as theater, the theatre is concerned, or cinema is concerned, we can't have apartheid, we can't have a rule that certain artists can't appear because they're of this nationality or that faith or whatever. We cannot allow it. And the more we can work together and invite to see more of each other, that is an area which is sacred, and I'll defend that forever. But that's fascinating. So that there should, there for should, everybody. For everyone, because the, as you know, there have been many recent cases of Israeli academics or performers being boycotted or boycotts suggested, but it, there should be no boycotts. Well, I wrote a letter with um, Julian Schnabel and Martin Sherman, quite, which was published. Um, there's been, because, you know, there's a lot of anger, despair, and there's been a lot of death and violence, it's, which has directly concerned Israelis and the Palestinians. Um, and because there's been no political solution at all, uh, for a long, long time. Um, a lot of people have begun to speak about, well, we'll boycott this, we'll boycott that. Um, I'm not getting into the politics of that because that's not why you and I are talking, except insofar as it concerns actors, filmmakers, dancers, musicians, rock stars, or whoever. Um, I think that it's got to be fair is fair, fair is square. Everybody's welcome to perform. And I think we need much more of it, not less of it. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've supported from the very beginning the West Eastern Divan Orchestra. Daniel Bec Barenboim. Yeah, Barenboim and Edwards, the former Edward Said. Yeah. That's the kind of work that we should do in every quarter of life. And um, so that does concern being, being an artist or musician. And I would speak out on any occasion in which I found people in a rage of grief or whatever. But I'd still say, no, no, that this isn't the way. We can't go this way. And I'd try and put forward an alternative proposition.